This is a story about a city with high unemployment, abandoned industrial buildings, and where sheep are woven into everyday jokes, metaphors, stories, rituals, and advertisements. It's the story of how an art project brings actual sheep into the city for artists to transform their wool into art installations that provoke a citywide dialogue. Rijeka, Croatia was once a thriving industrial culture with a bustling seaport. With a population around 200,000, it was home to Croatia's main shipping pier. After the Croatian War of Independence ending in 1995, some of Rijeka's largest industries and employers went out of business. Today, the city remains in an uncertain transition. In 2008, the main shipping pier, which is called the Lukobran, was decommissioned. The Lukobran is situated directly between downtown Rijeka and the Adriatic Sea. Since then, the once of limits 2 km long pier was opened to the public for the first time. As a former industrial site, it has all of the rough intrigue of rust, concrete, ropes, rubbish, and fishnets. In 2010, the Lukobran became the focus of a critical dialogue when the international culture organization Musa Getis convened the Rijeka Café, a conversation and exploration of the city involving local and international artists, culture thinkers, policy makers, and practitioners. A very free English translation of what Heidegger said that, where, that the salvation is in the danger. Of course, that Rijeka is, as many cities today, in the danger of uh, bankruptcy that is looming constantly over it. But then that is also the kind of the motivator of the, all these uh, creative uh, uh, processes. And it is also why, I guess, the city of Rijeka happily um, embraces the Musagetis Cafe as a, as a sort of uh, addition to the efforts that already exist. So. And I think this is, this is something that one should um, have in mind because we are discussing these particular locations that are actually the, the material remnants of the working class. Yeah. Now, without these places, there is no working class. And the, what do we do with all these people? So when you think about the port, pier, whatever, you should have it, you know, this in mind. This is, a, this is a critical moment in the social development of the city. Presume that this society is unique in all of these issues, where in, in fact they're not unique at all. Um, they're unique historically and contextually in the particularity, but in the uh, real issues that are involved, Canada has the same problems, the United States has the same problems, most of Europe has the same. You know, this post-industrial is everywhere except for the underdeveloped world where they haven't even had industrialization yet. So short of that, everybody's struggling with the same questions. From all those conversations, an important question arose. What potential do newly public spaces left behind by de-industrialization offer socially engaged artists for addressing the city's collective desires for positive change? There is an artist creates an atmosphere which is art, but it's in the same time uh, it, it connects different sort of people. Mm -hmm. uh, so I really hope that the artist that will come mm -hmm. here will not make some sort of ego object or have uh, people look at it. I mean, oh, it's so beautiful, no, but that in a way it can connect people uh, and take them away from their uh, uh, yeah, so-called so uh, history and make something new, you know what I mean? So, uh, in a way, really facilitate relations, I mean, yeah, exactly. to, to design <laughs> <the> interactions. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. And, and that for that reason people will come to Rijeka. Following the discussions of Rijeka Café, Musa Geddes invited artist Matthew Mazoda as one of the artists to develop an original artistic intervention on the decommissioned pier. I was invited to come to Rijeka to do a work on the Lukobran, and uh, I'm not from here, so I only had my first impressions. In Rijeka, Matthew 
conceptualizes the Luca Brown as an outdoor gallery. His first gesture is to build a barn and bring seven sheep from the countryside to live on the pier. Matthew then invited seven artists in Rijeka to use wool sheared from sheep as a vehicle to develop projects to articulate the issues of the city they live in. Uh, one of the things I wanted to do was incorporate some of the people that live in Rijeka. I wanted to make almost like a platform for their voices. So this work is about taking two elements that are very simple, sheep from outside and the Lucobran, put them together to make some kind of energy. And then it was about taking the wool and giving it to these artists. And the idea was about transformation. The project came to be known as Pier Shear. The project brings together two of the city's most familiar icons. Sheep, which are embedded in everyday culture, and the pier, which is situated permanently at the front of the city. I, I think uh, Matthew's idea for working with wool really had to do with, with the fact that the industry here is really changing. There was this sort of a very um, hard, concrete, industrial heritage here in Rijeka, and he thought it would be interesting to bring part of the uh, sort of agricultural heritage to, um, to, this, to this space, to give it sort of a softer element. This particle shapes course wool, which is often burned or thrown away, is like the raw feeling of the pier which is abandoned and seen as valueless. The wool becomes a metaphor for the pier. Through the successful transformation of the wool into meaningful works of art, the pier and other abandoned sites of the city are seen for their potential as new sites of culture and for building identity. The seven projects by the seven local artists use the pier as a physical site and the shape wool as a symbolic material. The wool-based artworks installed on the pier address issues of history, current political, social and economic situations, utopian visions, storytelling, globalization, craft and formal artistic perspectives. Hi, my name is Nika Rukavina and this is my piece. It's called Mololongo. Yeah, it's, it's about the history of the Lukobran. The Lukobran was bombed in the Second World War and it was in the ruins and I found uh, this old photo and I w wanted to reproduce it in, in wool. The wool is kind of uh, stitched. So it's made like uh, those old crafts, I don't know how to say it in English, but in Italian it's uncinetto when you make uh, with wool you know, kind of that technique you know like the old making we can come and see the, the text the Ekkaspir was constructed for Austro-Hungarian administration by the architect Anatol Hanyal. The construction lasted from 1872 to 1888. The pier was named Pier Maria Theresa in the honor of Austro-Hungarian Empress Maria Theresa. In uh, May 1945, during the World War, Second World War, it was devastated um, uh, upon the retreat of German forces. After the war, the pier was rebuilt. The, uh, the depiction of the destroyed pier in wool is based on the photography from that period. It's a homage to Rijeka's history and the old wool craft that are forgotten. It's created to inspire the interest in the city's history as well as in the history of the surrounding areas. I see the pier as a point of convergence of two rhythms, the predictable, incessant rhythm of industry and urbanity and the domestic, rural rhythm of agriculture of sheep. My work, titled Stranded Sheep, combines performance and installation to create an allegory for Rijeka's transformation. In my story of how the sheep go to this part of the world, a ship carrying sheep was stranded on the pier during the Yugo, a heavy windstorm that sweeps up the Adriatic. 
the ship in the form of a large, flat, discarded concrete slab to which I attached a rudimentary sail and tire moorings became a comical, calcified monument to the past. Mythical sheep snagging their wool on sharp bits of rock and concrete scrambled up the berm to see the panoramic view of Rijeka. They liked it so much that they stayed and offered a gift of their milk for cheese to go nicely with bread and wine. And so I set up a table on the pier and invited everyone to sit, break bread, eat sheep's cheese and drink wine with a magnificent view of Rijeka across the water. As if it was answering what Predrag Matvejevic asks in Mediterranean, a culture landscape. What is the connection between the sea and the memory of the sheep path? Margin View is a capsular sculpture perched on the wall of the pier, which is in fact a parasitical object, clinging to the wall like a cocoon for cozy slumber, shaped by stringers evocative of the hull of the ship. The inside-outside sculpture is a framing device for a pure view of the city and the sea, unobstructed by industrial forms. Um, the work beacons the passerby. It's an intimate place of solace, a cocoon for contemplating the city's transformation into a new state of being, like a butterfly emerging from lava. When I'm making site-specific art installations, deciding what it's going to be, I always start with the question where. So first, I walk along the given area to find the place that already have some magic. And when I say magic, uh, I'm thinking of values that are good for human, like comfort, safety, nice view or such. And those values um, that aren't already there, I add up. Uh, open areas are uh, big and they are uh, swallowing uh, human-sized objects. So it must be something big to influence the space. Uh, this piece on the end of the pier is literally a piece of junk. It has almost no value at all, except our work on it, which was also not that hard since it's all just nailed down just to be solid. Banja Šuga je izraz koji koriste mornari i ribari za onaj dio obale ili barke koji je prošaran na naslagama morske trave i školjki, a ostaje na suhom nakon što se more povuklo. Izraz je preuzet iz talijanskog jezika, ali naši domaći ljudi koriste taj izraz, što je meni bila odlična inspiracija da nazovem svoj rad, jer šećući lukobranom, riječkim lukobranom, razmišljajući kako da moju vunu upletem u tu nekakvu priču, pažnju mi je privukla obala lukobrana koja je bila krcata školjkama, travama i počeo mi se vrtiti film na koji način i sa kakvim materijalima ja to mogu u vuni napraviti. Pa sam koristeći svilu u školjke staklo razne vrste materijala, ufilcavajući zajedno sa vunom, dobila taj efekt koji je napravilo more na stjenkama lukobrana. So, the installation Ruzina, which I made, was representing the unity of four one-strong industries of Rijeka, which are Ina Oil Company, Treći Maj Shipyard, the Pira Factory and the Port of Rijeka. So I chose special spots on the pier for my installation, and from that spot people could see the oil facilities of Ina Mlaka, which are no longer in function. And the installation was metaphor of the decaying industry of Rijeka, 
and the materials I used and the location of the welding studio were also symbolic. So the rusty pipes I've got from Techi Mai and uh, the shipyard and the installation has been welded in the holes of torpedo. Inside of cold metal pipes I put warm wool like oil that goes to pipes which was altogether actually the metaphor of life. And with my installation I wanted to honor not only Rijeka and its strong industry of the past but all the people who have been connected to Rijeka's decaying industry. The old proverb from the Balkan region, you can't have both ship and money, speaks about the necessity of life's compromises. From their experience, our elders know that they first have to give up something, like ship, in order to get something else, like money. However, in their advertising campaign in Croatia, a leading European telecommunication company, Tele2, was promising to their customers both ship and money. Huge billboards throughout the city depicted a black sheep laughing comfortably under the slogan, cheating with the wise saying and selling off the idea that you can have it all in the times when many don't have anything, provokes this anti-statement whose logic does not accept either or, or can have both possibilities. The banner simply says, neither sheep nor money, reflecting the state of despair in the times of economic crisis in Croatia. I'm living uh, near the pier, uh, and, and I know that uh, uh, that part of town needs a lot of uh, lot of things, uh, not not commercial things, but uh, I think that a pier is now completely empty, and I'm afraid that uh, city government and citizens of Rijeka told that uh, that's it, that only new pedestrian zone, and and I'm afraid. Uh, uh, that uh, no one thinks about uh, some developing of that space because that, that space is uh, uh, a fantastical uh, seaside place in the city center. I think that uh, that pier has a big potential and the problem is that for that was only the pier for 150 years and uh, citizens still don't have in mind uh, all the possibilities of that pier.